So I had a student in class, um, our Christian maturity class, ask a question about um, when is it appropriate, is it right for us as a believer in Christ to tell someone else who maybe grew up in a different culture or um, country that what they believe in is wrong? And so I'm a, before I answer this question, let me preface, we are called to be ambassadors to a kingdom. Okay, and so we aren't ambassadors to a religion. We're ambassadors to a kingdom, a kingdom that is in the unseen. And we are representatives, a physical representative of the kingdom that exists in heavenly places. So in the Bible, you know, Jesus gave us an example of how we are to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven okay so you're an ambassador we are told to be fishers of men we are told to communicate the good news which is the gospel what is the good news that salvation has come to all of god's creations humanity so with that preface i want to give you guys a lesson in history and why i say it is our duty to stand confident in the truth of god's word not to somehow cause an offense by telling someone that what they believe in is wrong. However, we are to share the good news. See, a lot of people use, and because they are religious, they use the Bible as a weapon to weaponize the truth against others. But when you're doing what you're called to do, which is to be a light shining in the midst of darkness, to show others being the salt of the earth of what God's plan is intended to be, you're sharing the gospel you're not weaponizing it and so if someone asks you about what you believe or if they're telling you that they believe something different you can simply share with them the gospel without saying you're wrong <clears throat> and so to each of you however you do that pray and ask god to give you discernment but this is how i typically explain to others that i believe that our God is the only true and living God. If they're open to it, I give them a quick history lesson. And I explain to them, first of all, I ask them, do you believe that God's word, the Bible, if it's the written word of God and that it is inerrant and it's the holy inspired word of God with his revelation of himself and his expectations and plan of salvation for all his creation, a lot of times they'll say that they believe that the Bible was written by multiple people, men. They don't believe it's God's inspired word. And that's when I explain that I believe that it is God's inspired word. And that is his revelation of himself and his plan of salvation to his creation, humanity. And then I go into letting them know what his plan was and how his plan was thwarted by the enemy and how the enemy came into existence. So in the book of Psalms, starting at 82, we know that God counseled, met with the council of what is called Elohim's other gods. We see that God himself is called an Elohim and he, it says he counsels with other gods. This is in Psalms 82. Now he counseled with them prior to even making humanity. So these Elohim, which means that they have a, they are spirits, they are beings created in God's image. But that the scriptures also say that there's no other Elohim like him. There's no other God like Yahweh Vahe. So in the Old Testament, Yahweh Vahe is what was the hint to the name of God. We can't even pronounce it. But in the New Testament, the name Yahweh Vahe is then revealed to the name Yahshua. All names, above all names, that everyone will bow down to. Now, that's a whole other subject of Jesus being God in the flesh. But what we notice here is that these other gods were in on creation. They were in on, you know, the plan that God had for humanity. 
We see in Isaiah 46 and 10 that God said the end was created at the beginning. He foreknew that man would fall and he would sin and that sin would enter into humanity, causing all this consequences and that there would be a debt for sin. We see this come to a climax in the story of Babel, where they tried to build a tower to the heavens and God confused the humanity's their language. And so you see that there was multiple nations that were then created from this event, Babel. Now, after this occurred, we see also that God speaks to these other entities, these Elohim, these um, principalities that, you know, they aren't doing what he asked them to do. They had power over these different nations and their job was to represent God the one and truly true God and steer humanity to worship him and him alone but these so-called little gods sons of gods these principalities powers and rulers of darkness now rulers of darkness rebelled against the one and true and only God and what they did was turn these other nations away from worshiping the true and only God and started to receive praise and worship for themselves. And so these other nations were worshiping other gods. And we see this also in the book of, I believe, Samuel, where they had the Ark of the Covenant and they were taking and moving it, you know, after a war, they were moving it from Palestine into back in the hands of King David. And they had the, the Palestines had the Ark of the Covenant in front of their God, Dagon, and they woke up and Dagon's statue was on the ground broken. And we see this because they said everywhere that this Ark of Covenant went, it was causing them tumors that they were like, look, get this, their God, Israel's God out of here. It's causing us all these turmoils and pain. So I say all that to say, other people who are worshiping these other gods, that's what they knew. However, God set aside his own family. He set aside his own people. And that's where you see Abraham come in. Abraham came from a pagan lineage. But God set him aside to demonstrate, you know, what God's expectation was all along. The enemy tried to dwarf God's plan, but God had a plan and he was not letting down. He set Abraham aside. He tested Abraham's heart. You know, Abraham passed it. It was accounted to him as faith. And now we see God creating his own group of people to represent him, to show the other nations what his plan was from the very beginning, how he wanted them to present themselves, to be ambassadors for him, to, to live a life of righteousness and all of that. This is why Abraham started the first commission. Every person that he communicated to in the book of Genesis, um, it communicates that he took people with him as he left and left his hometown. Those who believed in what he was communicating about the real true God. Now, speeding up. So our mission, the Israelites, the Jews, were supposed to carry the example of the true and only God to the rest of the nations. It was always God's intention to include everyone, the Gentiles, every nation into his plan. And so we see this now playing out before us. And God is what God is doing is saying, communicate this good news because, you know, these rebels, these principalities, powers and rulers of darkness that we see Paul talk about in the book of Ephesians that we fight not with pre uh, flesh and blood, but with these powers and rulers of darkness, we see examples of principalities when David is praying, not David, but Daniel is praying and, and, and is, his prayer is thwarted by a demon, a principality of Persia. So we are seeing that we are commissioned to communicate hey, you guys are not serving the true God. You're serving these little gods. And now here is the real and true God. His name is Joshua. His name has been revealed. He has come. He has died. He has risen. And now he is coming back again to come for you and me.
So is it wrong to communicate that Jesus is the only way? No. He says, I am the only way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father except through me. Unless you are a thief and a robber that is coming any other way, you are coming in a way illegally. I am the only way. And those who are not of God, these demons, principalities, and powers, they know their time is up. Will you be ready? Will you believe the truth?